show service this Amen. morning. Amen. Amen. in the sanctuary, if you could stand with us as we go before the throne of God in prayer. Hallelujah. We thank God so much for all of his grace, all of his mercy, and all the things that he's going to do. Father, we thank you this morning for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you this morning, Lord, for all the things that you are doing and yet going to do. We praise you for the opportunity to be in the house of God one more time. We ask today, Lord, that your anointed and your power continue to saturate the sanctuary, saturate the homes right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you've heard our prayers. You've heard the cries of your people. Answer today, Lord. But today, Lord, we need to hear from you. We need you to speak a word into our hearts, into our minds, into our spirits, which will not only lift us, but Lord will help us to move forward, to do the things that you have ordained and established for us to do, Lord. We honor you this morning, God. We worship you, God. For you are God alone. There is no one like you, Lord. We praise your name, God, for providing for us. We praise your name, Lord, for making a way through Jesus Christ that we might have the right to the tree of life. We praise your name, God, for connecting us to the Holy Spirit that we might know how to move and live, that we might have a greater life than just what we see here. We thank you right now, Lord, for the people you put in our lives, Lord, to enrich us, to help us, to cause us to grow, that when we have those times that we fall, Lord, there's someone there by our side, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, God, for the men and women of God who deliver your word, who pray and keep us, Lord, on track with the things that you want us to do. We thank you today, Lord. Have your way in this house. Have your way in our lives, Lord. We pray right now as we yield ourselves to you, Lord. We ask that you go beyond my prayers, God, because you know the needs. You see the desires, Lord. Let your spirit have free course today. Let your angels be all in the building, all in those homes, Lord, to minister the things that you desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to begin to worship. Amen.
worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet. Right here at forever. I want to make that person. And I'll be seated at your feet. Yes, seated. Yes, seated. To worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet. as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools for they do not know they are doing evil do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter in the presence of God for God is in heaven and you are on earth therefore let your words be few for the dreams come through much effort and the voice of a fool through many words as you come to the altar, keep these things in mind. We come to service to give our hearts, to give our mind, to give our ear, to hear the word of God. It's all about giving today. Even in offering your finances, it's all about giving today. Whatever happens today, give of yourself to the Lord. Amen. And you may not pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for life. We thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity, Lord, to do what you called us to do individually and as a church. Help us, Father, today to bring the right mindset to you, being open and honest with you, holding nothing back. If we can be honest with anyone, it would be you. 
For you know our hearts already, Lord God. So at the altar, my prayer is that we all come to you holding nothing back. Have your way, Jesus. Amen. Personal. Make him your God. Yes. All right. 
you know, kind of like, you know, everybody else is here in the room, but today is my day and I'm going to make him my God. Amen. And don't worry about if anybody feels that you're being selfish. It's okay to be selfish. Praise your God. And we glorify God this morning. Thank God so much for all that he's going to do today. We have a special best, uh, visitor, guest, um, a member, former member of the Abiding Faith family when he was here uh, at Santa Fe and then, of course, the University of Florida. And uh, his father has been, wow, what can I say, pastor prophet. And he's spoken here a couple of times, too, of a man of God that loved people yes. and gave himself to people. And uh, wow, he did so many wonderful things. And he started the Haiti Christian Mission, uh, which is now in Fun Parizan. I mean, butchered a little bit. <laughs> but it was, uh, let's see, he's one year older than us. So they're in their 49th year of, of ministry. And we praise God. But the amazing thing today, Pastor Prophet is going on to be with the Lord. But his son is here. Edwin's prophet is here. Amen? Amen. And the amazing thing about Edwin's is Edwin's was, let's see, what's the best thing I can say? The Lord brought him to abiding faith. Amen. Brought him to abiding faith and just turned his life around. One thing that his father told me, he said, of all my children, he was the least that I would think that would head the ministry. Because now, it was as a CEO and he heads the ministry. But he said he was one of the least of, he was the least of my children. I said, wow, um, what does that say? But at the same time, Edwards gave his life to the Lord. The Lord blessed him. And uh, i never forget, one of our students was in a critical car accident, life and death, down in West Palm Beach. Um, Dorothea and Dorothea um, it was crew oh, yeah. so I need somebody to help drive me down to West Palm Beach and Edwin said I'll go with you and Edwin's and I got on the van and drove down to West Palm Beach so that we could pray um, offer our help Whatever it was needed at that time for Dorothea, she was in ICU. Today, uh, Dorothea is a dentist, uh, doing well, amen? I can't say it was because of my prayers alone and those that were praying here at Abiding Faith, but we knew that, we know that God turned things around for Dorothea, and we praise him for it. But Edwards was a part of that journey, and I really believe that on that journey, God was moving by his spirit to touch him. So I thank God so much, and I praise God for Edwin's prophet. I'm going to let him come to you and share a few words with you. We've been partnering with uh, the HCM, the Haiti Christian Mission. This is our about, about 15 years that we've been partnering with this ministry, our mission in Haiti. We call it our mission. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Edwin's bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to just be back here with you again. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's been quite some time um, since 2007. I graduated from UF and little did I know that God was going to call me to a, a bigger and even a better life. Um, I feel so much peace, even in a chaotic state in Haiti. But I first want to thank the my mentor, uh, who uh, when my dad passed away in uh, uh, 2021, um, I called Reverend Corey and I said, you know, you're my dad, you know? And he said, oh, I know that, son. We're gonna continue this journey together. And so I thank you for just your guidance, your love, your patience with me since uh, I was, you know, back here at, uh, in Gainesville. Um, We've been in partnership for 15 years, and it's just been incredible. Uh, little did I know that so many of my, uh, my colleagues, my former classmates, are still involved with ministry, and you all are involved with ministry, and it really encourages us because the times in Haiti now are extremely difficult. I, I don't know if you've seen in the news, I don't know if you've seen in 
other people from Haiti and organizations are speaking about the kidnapping situation, the gang violence. Uh, it's just been, I had to move my family out. I was living in Haiti until uh, 2022, or 2021, excuse me, um, right after uh, the assassination of the president, and then on the earthquake, and the day that I was supposed to take my children to, uh, to see their, their, their doctor, um, God gave me a message and said, not today. And if I were to take them, that, if I were to take them to that day, uh, we could have been in some serious, serious harm uh, with my uh, beautiful little children. I mean, they were, they were three months at that time, so, I'm, no, sorry, they were six months at that time, so I'm very thankful uh, for the opportunity to be here, but the opportunity that I get to go back and to be able to do ministry uh, with my brothers and sisters. Haitian Christian Mission, we're celebrating our 49th year. Amen. Going on 50. Uh, in 2010, when God called me for the ministry, I didn't know, I just heard a call. The earthquake happened January 12th. I was on the phone with my brother right before the earthquake and when I got out of class from, uh, I was doing my master's at that time, I uh, tried to call him back. Uh, I couldn't get an answer, and I looked in the news and I saw just a 7.4 earthquake uh, that devastated millions of lives in Haiti. And still today, we haven't recovered. But I don't want to talk about Haiti in general, the entire picture. I want to talk about the small pockets, the people like Reverend Court, who invested in me that little small seed now is investing back into the country of Haiti. Amen. And so many other young men and young women that has been mentored by Reverend Court and the leadership here. So I'm very thankful that we get to be part of that. But right now, the situation in Haiti, there are so many situations here. And I, the other day when I was speaking to Reverend Court, he said, man, I just came from hearing some of the most devastating <laughs> news of the gun issues and the gun violence here in the U.S. with juveniles. And if you see that, we're all battling the same battle, even here and, and in Haiti. Because right now in Haiti, you have 12, 14-year-old boys that are holding AR-15s and all types of automatic weapons. And what are they doing? They're terrorizing all over the country. Before, we used to know the small pockets where you used to have to stay away from. Now it's all over the country. Anybody can be a victim. Anybody can be subject to violence. But what is happening here in, at Haitian Christian Mission in the small pockets, like the people that are investing, is that these small pockets we have in our communities, our pastors, our teachers, our just anybody in the community who's been around for a while that are trying to, to guide and, and invest in the youth through education, through healthcare, through through just mentorship, we see the love in that. And at the end of year, at the end of year last year, we had great celebrations throughout the country. We had twelve over twelve hundred kids come to our our uh, our end of year celebrations for you know through our sponsorship program or through our uh, through our churches. We had our athletic programs had banquets and kids were receiving awards for just a good deed that they've done in in their sport, if it's soccer or basketball. People, lives are getting changed, and we have to be at the forefront of continuing to invest into the lives of our brothers and sisters here in Haiti, in Dominica, and wherever else we go. So I'm very thankful that I get the chance to be here, and I see improvements. I can't wait to visit uh, the, the fellowship hall. Just like right now, you, 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 we, can't, we can't all be in Haiti together, but I can't wait to the day that you come back and you see the improvements you see what we've been building, what we've been, we've been working towards, and you see the people that you've been investing in. And that's the, major, that's the most important thing. I would say the Haitian people have great hearts because in the situation that we're in now, people are protecting one another, and people are standing up against the gang violence, and I just hope that God will intervene and he will make a change in Haiti. But it takes your resources, it takes all of us, it takes your prayers, it takes all of us to do it together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Abiding Faith, for just your faithful giving. And I can't wait to the day that you return to Haiti and you see all the fruits that God has 
for the Haitian people and also for you because when you go down there, not only that you bless the brothers and sisters, but your life change, your heart change. You get oil, you just get lifted. And so I really appreciate just the, the, the time that we get to fellowship together and I appreciate the time that I get spent with you here. And I'm looking forward to the time in Haiti. God bless. Amen. So I just want to show you a real quick clip. Um, and if anybody wants more information about the organization, and I know that you guys have been pouring a lot into feeding. Matter of fact, your investment has gone into feeding the young men and women that you're going to see in this video. And all year, I know that you know so many times that you know you have a campaign and uh, you're like, hey, where is my resources going? Where, where are my where are my finances going? Well, I'm telling you, over 450 staff members down in Haiti, over 2,900 kids in school, over 13,000 people are worshiping the Lord. Amen. People are still, God has his, has his soldiers, has his people on the ground that are doing the work and it's still happening. And I can't wait till the day you come back. So uh, let me introduce this video. This is our end of year recap uh, of last year. And uh, we're just thrilled that we're able to celebrate together. We are overwhelmed with gratitude as we review all of the photos and videos from our end of year celebrations that happened all throughout Haiti over the past few weeks. We want to say thank you for all of your prayers and donations. Even in the midst of unsafety and uncertainty, your gifts provided opportunities for some of our churches and schools to gather all around the country. Over 1,200 of our students were able to enjoy a Christmas party. Our pastors at various churches made every effort to put on some kind of Christmas service or gathering. Some churches, like Redemption and Bon Cheval, were even able to host a baptism service. Our Play It Forward ministry held an end-of-year festival that hosted about 800 people on campus. And some of these year-end events even included food distributions. The end of the year and Christmas celebrations in 2022 might have looked a little bit different than in years past, but these events still provided a time of reflection and gratitude for God's provision and guidance this year. Singing and laughter filled the air as wonderful memories were made to close out 2022. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Thank you so much, Ernie. <laughs> Amen. And we do thank you, Brother Edwards. God bless you, man. And as he said, what he's doing and um, the staff, it's, it, it, it's amazing to, to um, and I'm thinking about something that just transpired at a board meeting, and um, they're still doing what they do, going to school uh, and church, and um, I asked a question in board meeting, I said, are we putting the people in harm's way by, you know, letting them go to school and, and and, but I can't stop, you can't stop when somebody has a desire. Amen. That's what I understood. Amen. Although it may be chaotic and crazy all around them, they really wanted to be in church or in school. And so we may not be able to imagine what that's like to have to go to school or church, not knowing you know, what may happen, but they still pursue it, they still go. And I just thank God so much and thank God for you. Um, in your heart as you continue to lead what dad put inside of you. Amen. Amen. We praise and we bless him. Let's go to the throne of God in prayer. We give you glory. We give you praise, O oh Lord, for all that now, Lord, we have just witnessed with the Haiti Christian mission. And we pray now, Lord, that you will bless the mission, O oh God, and bless our brother Edwin's. We thank you today, Lord, for what you're doing in all of our lives. And we give you glory and we give you praise right now, Lord. We pray now, God, that you would move against whatever the enemy has purpose. And 
all the things, God, he desires to do against any of us. We pray that you would move against it in the name of Jesus. We pray now, Lord, for your healing touch to take place right here in the sanctuary. And for those that are watching virtually this morning, that you would touch and heal and restore and revive this morning. That you would bring forth the miracles that are needed right now in the name of Jesus. God, we just want to glorify and thank you for a fresh start, a new beginning today. We thank you, Lord, how you have brought us and carried us throughout the week. We pray now, Lord, for those that are on our prayer list, those that are sick this morning, we, we pray your healing touch, your healing virtue to flow uh, inside of them. Lifting up special prayers this morning uh, for Dr. Jefferson, oh God, and we pray that you would touch him and heal him in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, oh Lord, for all, uh, all of the things you are going to do. I also thank you, Lord, for the inspiration that you've given to all the members, all of us, to continue to go forward. We praise you, we bless you, and we just want to say thank you, Jesus, for the things that you put inside of us. Never to stop, never to give up, never to give in. We give you all of the glory and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as I say always, I'm not going to hold you long, but just long enough to bless you. Can you just give God a big round of applause? Amen. Bigger than that. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Praise God. And I just have a note, and you know I like to exhort you, but we must be careful not to let the church drift or evolve into something God never intended it to be. We've got to be make we gotta make sure we're on our guard. But we must be careful not to let the church drift or evolve into something God never intended for it to be. You remember the story when he went into the temple and they had set up um, the money changers and they were selling the, the, the animals and he said, no, 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 my house, it's a house of prayer. And so where people sometimes would like to change the church, all right, into some kind of a business, we have to remember that this is the house of prayer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we don't want the church to become what the world, and the world is pushing hard, church. The world is pushing hard. Pushing hard for you to accept. Amen. Pushing hard for you to change. Yep. Amen. The world is pushing hard. We've got to push harder. And, and, and in other words, we've got to pray more. Give ourselves to fasting. All right? With all the things that are happening, and you know, we all know, 10 years from, from uh, 10 years ago, we didn't experience what we're uh, witnessing now with gun violence and, and children um, taking the lives of other children and um, some horrific things have happened this past week or the last two weeks, the, the mass shootings. We've got to be adamant about what God wants us to do and who he wants us to be. We cannot be lackadaisical concerning the will of God and the work of God. Amen. Amen. And so if you are a lazy person, you won't work well with this church. Well, Amen. Amen. You got to be you got to be willing to work and give up your best. So I, I like to say that not trying to chase you away if you're if you are uh, a lazy. But I'm just saying maybe I can inspire you to to do something more. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. He's even better. How do you know it, church? Because I'm blessed and ready and fresh and dreaming and not to see and open to change and rooted and grounded in the word of God. We got to get back to saying that. Amen. Some of us may have forgotten it. That's all right. Blessings, abiding faith. And to all of you who have joined us virtually. And I thank God for being here this morning in the house of God. David said in Psalms 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel. This is Psalms 122. To give thanks to the name of the Lord, for thrones are set 
for judgment. They are for judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. May, the, may they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. And because of the house of the Lord, our God, David said, I will seek your good. The joy of going into the house of the Lord makes me smile. How many got that feeling when you came in? Right. Amen. Yeah. Because this is my, my sanctuary. This is yes. where I could just kind of like say, let go and relax and, and, and pour all my, uh, my troubles out unto the Lord. So I got glad. Amen. Because this is the place where God I know will meet me. Can you imagine being stuck in the same place for 40 years of your life? And at the end of those four decades of 40 years, you still cannot enter your promised land. Well, no. In Joshua 5, 6, for the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people who were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. 40 years, church, well. they did not obey the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord had sworn uh, to their fathers, that he would give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Could you imagine? You're going in one direction, but then all of a sudden you feel that I don't have to obey what my mama says. That may be the voice of your God. Well, I don't have to obey what my daddy says. And for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. And they did of course not see that promised land that he had promised. It could have been the same way for abiding faith. And we could have been, we could have been uh, in the same storefront for 40 years. Well, going nowhere. By the way... By the way, the church, uh, the building that we were once in, is now being occupied by a church. Same, same building, but there's a church there. We could have been just like that. Amen. And I was thinking how what God does, God helps us to think outside the box. Yes. He got us outside of where we were so we could think outside of the box and work ministry and do ministry. And go to the prisons and see the need for those that were homeless or those that are on the streets. He, he got us outside of the box or got us outside of that atmosphere so we could now see ourselves vibrant and doing much more than we were already. Praise God. So thank God he didn't leave us in that same place. Thank God we obeyed the voice of God and he moved us forward. Amen. Can I put you on notice today? And I want you to realize that our church has always been about soul winning. Nothing has ever changed. Nothing has ever changed. It has always been about winning souls. Trying to see how we can change a life. Improvement or helping somebody to even feel like they can do better. Amen. Low self-esteem and all that to turn all those things around. around. Our church has always been about soul winning. God raised us up to win souls, to be instrumental in the lives of men and women who were incarcerated, to find themselves, to find ourselves also on busy streets, helping those that were in need, witnessing to the prostitutes and those that had, you know, just thrown their, or throwing their lives away. God put us there. One thing that Reverend Libby said, and God, he's one of our founding members, and I follow this vision because this is what God spoke to him at the very beginning. That God called us because he wanted us, the church. At that time, it was just a, a prayer group. Just three young men praying in the dorm room before it grew into where we find ourselves abiding faith. I want you to be a light to the city. I want you to be a light. That's what God spoke, church. 
did change, it shouldn't change, amen? And it should remain that we will what? Be a light to the city, to the university, to the college. That we will be a light to those that are in darkness. Amen? Amen. God gave us some well-defined things that he wanted us to do. So if you're sitting here in church and you don't feel like, I don't want to go out and be a witness to anybody. Oh, I don't feel that going to the prison is necessary. Handing a, a sandwich to somebody on the street, I, I don't see that as being something, I just want to come to church and sit down and it, is, it may not be comfortable for you in this church because God wants us to continue with the vision and win souls and go into the, the world. Praise God. Praise God. May not be a right fit for you, but stay here and I believe that God will work it inside of you and I believe you'll find yourself doing exactly what a lot of us thought we would never do. Amen. Take this gospel to the ends of the world. Amen. Amen. So where the church has been established by Jesus, we thank God for that. But what I want to talk to you this morning about, uh, talk to you this morning regarding is what happens when people lose sight of the vision. And it's very easy to lose your way. Now, I won't ask, have you ever lost your way? But it's very easy for you to lose your way. To be one day 100% the Lord, serving Him, and then all of a sudden you say, well, I don't think church is really that important anymore. It's very easy to lose your way. You have to be very careful of this. In 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, and I want to read this, this particular, um, these script, I want to read the scriptures to you to, uh, this morning because you get an idea of what I'm saying. It says in first verse, now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of the firstborn was Joel and the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba, but his sons did not walk in his ways. Here's Samuel. Here's the prophet. Here's the, this is the little boy that his mom brought him. Uh, Hannah brought him to the, the temple so that Eli could, could then supervise and watch over him. And here's this, here's this man that he has sons that he's raising up, but his sons are not walking in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Uh, per perverted justice. You, you know that Samuel probably was hurt. Oh, yes. You know he was probably hurt, embarrassed, that my children are the now, now the ones that are perverting the justice, that are taking bribes. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together, and they came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you're old. Your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people in all they say to you, for they have not rejected you but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. So God told him, he said, heed the voice of what the people are saying. They have rejected you, Samuel. They've rejected me. Careful when you cease doing it God's way. Careful. When flesh rules over the spirit, you now change the narrative. What they did not realize, they were now beginning to change the narrative. Everything God had intended to do for them, they want their own king, they're changing the story. All right. So according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Now therefore, heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. And I like how God does this. 
He said, warn them. Show them the behavior of the person that they're asking for to be their king. How many know God always gives you a warning? Oh, yes, he does. Amen. You may be blind right now, not seeing, but he knows and sees all. And God will give you a warning before you step yeah. into that direction. Always. That's why you got to thank God and praise God that I, 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 that I, I married the right person or I, I didn't step in the wrong direction or all those things. You got to thank God. Amen. So he'll, he'll always give you a warning. And so he said, so Samuel told the people, the Lord, so Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots to be his horsemen. Some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. He will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, bakers. He will and he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He said, this, this is what this behavior of this man is going to do. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage, and he will give it to his officers and servants. And he will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men, your donkeys, and put them to his work. All because you refuse to follow God's narrative. And you say, give us a king. This is what you're going to inherit. He said, he will take a tenth of your sheep. And you will be his servants. And you will cry out in the day because of your, your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Too late. You know how sometimes you get in the middle of something and you say, oh Lord, help me. Too late. He will not hear you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. After all that warning, after all that warning, they still refuse. If God came to you today and told you what you need to do and told you the way that you are going or what you want is not good for you, would you pay attention to it? Would you heed his voice? Or would you blow him off and say, well, I'm going to do what I want to do? Would you heed his voice? Would there be a conviction on the inside of your spirit, your soul, to convict you that this is not good for you spiritually? Well, you're going to hurt your baby. You're going to hurt the child. You're going to hurt your, your, your parents. Would you follow him if he came to you and directly spoke to you? Would you heed his voice? Or would you keep your foot on the ga gas pedal and fast at your speed? Uh, go ahead and do what you want to do. Would you do it? Think about it. Think about it because those situations come up in life where we need to slow down and listen to what God is saying. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said no. But we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to Samuel, heed their voice, make them a king. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, every man go into his city. All right. And I, I have a scripture in, from 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, you know, sometimes you feel like I'm just overwhelmed and you just need to slow down and, and allow God, God's grace, amen, to take care of you. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, uh, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect when you're weak in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. 
For when I am weak, then I am strong. Slow down. Hold on. Heed the voice of the Lord. Because his grace is sufficient. We don't always see it like that. Antonio Brown. And I don't know if everybody knows Antonio Brown, but he was a um, football player. He took himself out of the game on national TV. And you were saying, what is wrong with this man? He wanted to, of course, be uh, get more passes. There was some reason why Antonio was upset that day, and he just took his, uh, his shirt off, and, and, and it, was, it was horrible to watch, you know. Um, but he took himself out of the game. And church, this is what I'm saying. Before you take yourself out of the game, before you change the narrative, allow God's grace to see you through to help you to make it to the next step of your life before you just count him out and say, I'm going to do what I want to do because I want to do it. Don't do that. Watch. The devil normally crowds in and, and, and forces you to make a decision that you later regret. I don't know all the story behind what's going on with Antonio. I heard another team um, was possibly going to pick him up uh, the other day, but um, I think he ruined his chances with a lot of others that could have picked him up. And we have to be very careful of that. In reading the book, Spiritual Leadership by Henry and Richard Blackaby, I found this point. True spiritual leadership can be defined in one statement. In one statement. When you move God, Move when you move people to God's uh, agenda. A spiritual leader uh, is able to move people to God's agenda. Spiritually. Samuel was trying hard to move the people to God's agenda, but that's not easy. It's not easy when you already have your mind made. But the true spiritual leader is a work to move people from their agenda to what God wants. Although Saul had been appointed king, he had his own agenda. And we later find in 1 Samuel 15 that Saul disobeyed the instructions of God and it cost him his kingdom. All because, rather than, being, rather than being on God's agenda, he had his own thoughts and plans of what he wanted. That's like the rebellious child that says, I'm going to do it. Although mama has said no, daddy has said no. You know, we were just like that, right? Amen. We've always been saved, right? We had our own way of what we wanted to do, our own mind. And if we didn't want to do it, we did do it. We were changing the narrative of our lives. Thank God for grace that he Amen. saved us all just in time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But that's what happened with Samuel, who, I mean with Saul. He, he disobeyed those instructions and it cost him the kingdom. If he would have moved to God's agenda, he would have retained the kingdom. Now, you can just imagine, what would you have right now if you were really on God's agenda? If you stayed on, what could you really have? If I really just stayed with what God wants, not what I want, what he wants. But we lose church when we seek to do it the way we want to do it. We lose Remember this, God won't share his glory with another. We lose. We lose. So my, my, my word today that uh, I didn't share with you, do we know what God wants? Do we know what God wants? Have we figured that out? All he's asking uh, for all of us is just to follow. 
But if you don't know what God wants, don't jump out and do something that will be against his will or against the narrative that he's already written for your life. Slow it down. Slow it down. Sometimes that energy is, is rambunctious and you just feel like this is the will of God and it may not be the will of God. Some things look good, but they're rotten to the core. Amen. And it may not be the will of God for you or the way that God wants you to go. Do we know what God wants? Not guessing. Do we know what he wants? And I just uh, encourage each and every one of you to stay on God's agenda, to get on God's agenda, to let him walk with you or lead you by his spirit. Remember, some things look good. It looks like it's a good plan. Looks like I should move to New York, Las Vegas. Looks good, but it may be detrimental for you. You may get to that place and struggle for the rest of your days. So that's why we have to realize, take him at his word. Follow God 100%. Amen? Follow him 100%. Do we know what God wants? Do we know what God wants? Then if we know all this, all he's asking for each and every one of us to do is to follow him. And I think you see, you'll see the outcome will be great. Praise God. The outcome will be great. That's the word of God for the people of God. Amen. And true spiritual leadership can be defined. One statement, a spiritual leader will make sure that he tries to move you onto God's agenda. That move also he influences you. All right. Influence you to do it God's way to do a God's way. Let's all stand for prayer. That's what he's asking. Do you know what God wants? Ask yourself that question. Do you know what he wants? Praise God. As I said earlier, 40 years is a long time to be wandering around Penalized because you disobeyed the voice of God. Forty years is a long time. And of course, they didn't enter into the promised land. They died. Only the offspring entered into the promised land. But thank God so much that we heard the voice of God. Praise God. And we obeyed. Because I can just imagine. Still in that four point church. For 40 years going nowhere. God is good. God is good. Bless his name. Do you know what God wants? I'm going to give you a chance to come to the altar this morning. And, and if you feel that there is a stronghold you're trying to get from under or shake loose, and maybe that stronghold is preventing you from hearing his voice to do what he wants, to follow the instructions that God has given. If you feel that God, I, I start out one way and I end up doing something completely different. As I shared with somebody uh, earlier this week, I desire to do good, but evil is always present. And if you want to move from that so that you can walk in the way that he wants, come down for prayer this morning. If you're watching us virtually this morning. You just put yourself on the altar today. If you've been doing it like you want to do it, refusing to follow him, settle down this morning. Do you know what he wants for you? And if you know what he wants for you, we're looking for the outcome. We're looking for change. Whenever you do it God's way, there are always the, the, what we might say, the positive results as you follow Him. Praise God. All these acts are for all of us to do.
to follow. Father God, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you today. All you want us to do, oh God, is to follow. And Father, we pray that you would move by your spirit and forgive us when we have not followed your way. But Lord, on the inside, this day, strengthen and redeem and restore and revive. So Father, that we will hear your voice and obey what you want and require each and every one of us. I pray, God, that you move against, now, Lord, the will of the enemy. And that voice that's not yours, that you would move, now, Lord, so we'll hear your voice. Touch us on the inside. And if you're listening today, watching today, just repeat after me, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. Forgive me when I followed my own mind. Forgive me when I didn't even try to do it right. Save me today, Lord. Save me right now, Lord. Tell it, come into my heart. Come into my life to stay. I bless you, Lord. And I praise you for it. For saving my life and redeeming me. And I pray, Father, that you fill me with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that from this day forward will guide me to stay with your narrative. Will guide me to follow your voice. The Holy Spirit that will guide me to stay on the path that you've chosen for me. I bless you for it. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Keep moving by your spirit, Lord. Keep drawing us together as a body of Christ, as a church, the body of Christ. Keep drawing us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are a body of Christ. And God, let us now, Lord, understand the importance of being the body of Christ. Have your way, Jesus. Strengthen us from this day forward as we continue to pray for the world in which we live, as we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Haiti, as we continue to pray now, Lord, that you root up and move out every wicked thing that's not like you. Let your hands rest upon Haiti today, O oh Lord. Bless, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Let it bless right here, rest right here in Gainesville, O oh Father. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. We pray for the victims or the, the families of those more, more recent um, uh, mass shootings, O oh God, those that are, are dealing and waking up with the aftermath of losing a loved one. God, we pray, help our country, O oh Lord. Help our, our, our legislatures, those that are, are, are making the law, Lord, and, and passing these laws. God, help them to be convicted that souls can be preserved, moms can be preserved, families can be saved, oh Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Turn back this spirit that's loose. In the name of Jesus. Back to the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus. And I pray this prayer of protection upon all of our families. All of our friends. All of our loved ones. Wherever they might be. That you would protect and cover every one of them in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. We want what you want, God. Have your way this day, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Everything that opposes your will, turn it back away from us in the name of Jesus. Drugs, alcohol, everything that opposes what you want in us. I pray you move against it in the name of Jesus. Move by your spirit this day, O oh Lord, and keep us in the pathway we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give
give God a big hand clap of praise? Do you want what God wants? Bless His name. Do you know what He wants for you? Praise God. We thank God for the morning message, God. Uh, and the gatherings. Nothing like righteous living. Nothing like righteous and holy living. Praise God. Amen. We're going to give today, and those are watching virtually, you can give this today as well. A special offering, a special gift you can uh, give this morning for uh, our Haiti mission. Uh, but give your best today. Give your tithe, give your offering, and bless the Lord in your giving this morning. I would like to say you can go to www.abidingfaithcc.org and hit the giving button and give your, your tithe or offering. And you can also designate where you want your offering to go if you're giving online. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And there's lots of work for us to do. Remember that. It's not over. This is the end of April. And you have to all ask, ask yourself, have I done or am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I doing everything he wants me to do? Think about it. We're hit May tomorrow. But have you done everything God wants you to do? Praise God. Keep moving by God's spirit. And let the Lord have his way in your life. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus.